The amount of money that you spend on each of these things isn't determined by how you shop for them individually, but how you think about them all together. No, I'm not suggesting that you buy a snowblower to take with you on vacation, nor is this going to be one of those corny, no spend a challenge videos. It's actually due to a flaw with how our brains work, and there's two main reasons this happens. To understand the first reason, we're going to have to go all the way back to 1796. Have you ever bought something new then realized that it looks out of place in the current environment. It could be a new piece of clothing, a new piece of furniture, a new power tool, or whatever. And instead of getting rid of the new item, you replace everything around it. This happens because of something called the Diderot effect, and it's based on the combination of two ideas. First, consumers will buy goods that match their sense of identity, which in turn creates a cohesive and complementary collection of items. Second, acquiring a new possession that doesn't align with the consumer's existing complementary products may trigger a cycle of increased consumption. The Diderot effect is named after a 1769 essay by the French philosopher Denis Diderot called Regrets for My Old Dressing Gown. And if you're American, his name is pronounced Denis Diderot. <laughs> Let's be honest, but <laughs> I'm going to try to stick with the French way of saying it because... I don't know, maybe they're a little bit more proper than us Americans. In this essay, he wrote about a new scarlet dressing gown that he had acquired. Since he got this new dressing gown, there was no use for his old one, so he got rid of it. As he wore this fresh new gown, he started to notice that the things around him didn't really fit in any longer. Laying that new fresh robe on his old beat up straw chair led him to replace it with a nice new leather chair. The mantle above his fireplace started to look a little bare, so it was filled in with a large mirror. That empty space in the corner was replaced with a writing desk, and the remaining empty spaces were covered up with new paintings and cabinets. Just to this small change of acquiring that new robe caused his life to spiral into overconsumption to complement this new identity that this scarlet robe gave him, which in turn put him into large amounts of debt. Diderot eventually came to realize what had happened, and he wrote, I was the absolute master of my old robe. I have become the slave of the new one. Now, while we can look at this guy and laugh at how ridiculous this whole thing sounds, it's actually extremely relevant to you and me as well probably just not in the form of a weird scarlet robe. For example, I got my back deck repainted a few years ago because it was starting to look rough. And what do you know, the old patio furniture started to look a little out of place. The next spring, I spent $1,300 on a new table, chairs, and umbrella. Now I could have stuck with the old furniture, sure, it had a little bit of rust on it, and one of the chairs actually broke because it was about seven years old, but it technically still worked. After giving that deck a fresh coat of paint, my identity had shifted to someone who has a nice looking presentable backyard. Fun fact, three months later, <laughs> the glass tabletop shattered, so I had to spend another $200 to have it replaced. Most of the things that we buy come with supplemental cost. These second and third order consequences are super easy to overlook even for the most intelligent people out there. This is something that I always try to warn new homeowners about. The cost of a home has way more additional costs than most people want to admit. I wouldn't even consider them to be hidden costs either. They're just costs that people promoting home ownership decide to leave out of the conversation for some odd reason. All it takes is one update in the new home that you buy and the costs start to spiral out of control. Paint one wall and you need new flooring which spirals into needing new couches, which turns into needing new end tables and coffee tables, which turns into needing new knickknacks and things to hang on the walls. Eventually, your vehicles and clothes need to match this new identity that you've created for yourself. Thousands and thousands of dollars later, you're wondering why in the world you're broke, possibly in a bunch of debt, and you're a slave to the job that you hate because you need this income to pay for all of the BS that you've added to your life. The Diderot effect is also common when someone takes a higher paying job or upgrades their income. We've all seen it in either other people or ourselves. You feel like you need to buy a nicer car or clothes to fit in with the people that you work around, which can then spill into other areas of your life. When I worked in corporate America, no one explicitly told me to start falling in line with how I dress or the car I drove or things like that. But I'd be lying if I said I didn't feel that invisible pull from the crowd. I saw a ton of other people around me start to buy nicer things, even though I knew that it would continue to keep them broke. Meanwhile, I was the guy who people thought from the outside was 
broke. I drove a fairly old car and wore the same outfit every single week. If you want to help support my dog Molly as well as this channel, please hit that thumbs up button and share the video with someone you think needs to see it. To understand the second reason people accidentally spend too much money, we need to take a look at a paper published in the Journal of Consumer Research called The Exception is the Rule. The authors make a case for the fact that the issue of overspending lies within two different ways people spend their money and how expenses are mentally accounted for. They say purchases fall along a continuum from ordinary to exceptional, with many of the largest expenses being the most exceptional. Exceptional items are things consumers perceive to be special and unusual or purchased infrequently. Think of items like cars, homes, electronics, celebrations, and travel. Additional expenses associated with these infrequent purchases would also be considered an exceptional item. For example, purchases made while traveling. So like that $250 Star Wars lightsaber at Disney World or the $300 meal on vacation. Since it's part of the infrequent event, it would be categorized under this umbrella. On the other hand, ordinary items are things the consumer perceives to be common and purchased frequently. These are items such as food, a cup of coffee, gas, household expenses, gym memberships, entertainment, and things like that. Spending on ordinary expenses can get out of control due to the nature of how often we make them. Since we buy these sorts of things on a regular basis, it's easy to lose sight of what the total cost will be over a long period of time. Our brains are almost on autopilot. One way to prevent this from becoming too much of a problem is to account for the total yearly cost of your ordinary expenses even though you make them on a regular basis. While it's possible to overspend on ordinary expenses, and many people do, it's not the largest driver of overspending. Based on this research, the largest driver is with the exceptional expenses that we all make. Seven different studies confirmed that consumers are willing to pay more for exceptional items when they're presented one at a time as opposed to all at once. This has to do with how we categorize these expenses in our brain in a very narrow way. If you're going to take a vacation in February, then you might plan on spending $5,000 total on that trip. It gets categorized under a vacation expense. When you get home from that trip, you start thinking about the car that you are planning on purchasing in June. You expect to spend around $20,000 on it. This is categorized under vehicle expense. After you buy that car in June, you remember that you want to throw a surprise party for your significant other in September. For that, you plan to spend $1,500. Our brains categorize this as a celebration expense. Then in October, you decide that you want to pick up a snowblower so you're ready for when the weather starts changing. You're going to spend about $1,300 on that. This gets categorized as a household or lawn care expense. There's actually two solutions to this problem that are backed by research. First, instead of categorizing each of these exceptional expenses in your brain as individual, categorize them as all together. By thinking of them all together and how much you are going to have to spend throughout the year, it'll force you to rethink how much you're spending overall, which in turn will reduce your chances of overspending on them individually. Instead of spending $5,000 on that vacation, you'd maybe find a way to spend $4,000 because you know that there are three other exceptional expenses you need to make throughout the year. Instead of $20,000 on a car, you might spend $17,000 and still be just as happy happy because you did just spend $4,000 on that vacation and still have a few more exceptional expenses left for the year. The second solution is to just remind yourself to consider all exceptional expenses as a part of a broad category of goods, even if you don't 100% know what those expenses will be. Some of these expenses might be really hard to predict. If we're in the middle of the summer, it would be easy to forget that you wanted to get a snowblower in December because all you're thinking about at that point in time is that beautiful beautiful summer weather. When you go to buy that car in June, it would help to remind yourself that there are probably going to be more exceptional expenses later in the year, even if you don't know what they are exactly right now. Let me be extremely clear about something when it comes to spending money in general. None of this is to say that you should never upgrade or accept gifts that are an upgrade from what you currently own. There is nothing wrong with spending money at all, so I don't want anyone to feel guilty about that. I honestly want every single one of you to spend money on things that improve your life. But there is a problem with not understanding the total cost of ownership. This includes the additional spending that might creep up as a result of the initial decision, as well as those psychological flaws in our human brain 
brain that makes all of us overspend. You want to get to a point where you are very clear about the things that are and are not important to you. That way you know how to spend your money in a way that will have a very meaningful improvement on your overall life while not making you completely broke and having to work for way longer than you actually have to. Always remember that children say I want and adults say I can afford. If you can't afford it right now, then get your butt out there and make some more money so you can eventually afford it. A healthy mix between patience and action are going to give you the very best results. Hit that thumbs up button and share the video to help support my dog Molly as well as this channel. Other ways to help support the channel are in the description below. I'll see you in the next one, friends. Done.